This man's name is Michael Hughes, otherwise known as Mad Mike. This footage shows the last seconds of his life. Seeing this, a normal person would surely have a barrage of questions. What kind of strange rocket is that? Who in their right mind would use that to fly anywhere? What on earth is happening here? The answer may sound like a bad joke. Mad Mike didn't earn his moniker for no reason. At the age of 64, this self-taught pilot advocated for the theory that Earth is actually flat. He intended to prove it by ascending to a height of one and a half kilometers in his homemade rocket. Mike constructed this steam-powered rocket in his backyard, spending about $18,000 on the project. This wasn't his first flight to prove the flat Earth theory. In March 2017, he managed to rise to a height of 570 meters in his homemade rocket, then deployed parachutes and had a rather rough landing. You've just seen the tragic outcome of the second attempt. Surely this only raises more questions. Why would Mike choose such a complicated method? What stopped him from simply buying a ticket for the next available flight? The cruel irony is that had he done so, Mad Mike would have been able to safely see through the airplane window that Earth is really flat. Wait, what? No, no, don't rush to close this video. We did say see through an airplane window and that changes a lot. You'll discover the answer in this video. Now let's try to understand what drives people's indomitable belief in the flat earth theory so much that they're even willing to risk their lives for it. How can such medieval views exist in our space-faring age? Or is there something to the flat earth theory after all? Is the Earth really flat? As the proponents of the flat Earth theory suggest, our world looks something like this. According to this theory, the Earth is a circular plane with a diameter of 40,000 kilometers. At the center is what we conventionally call the North Pole. Instead of the South Pole, there's a giant ice wall encircling the Earth's disk. All of this is covered by some sort of dome under which the sun and moon orbit in a circular pattern. Nightfall isn't due to the sun setting below the horizon, but rather because it moves away from the observer. The change of seasons is attributed to the sun's movement towards the edge of the disk and its return to the center over a course of a year. Flat Earth proponents say that the ice wall, commonly referred to as Antarctica, is heavily guarded and has limited access. They also claim that there's no such thing as space, and rocket launches are merely a deception. They also dismiss footage from the International Space Station as high-budget Hollywood production. And they mean all of this for real. There's even a Flat Earth Society that regularly hosts conferences. Surprisingly, its membership, which includes some notable public figures, continues to grow. But before we label these people, let's at least consider their arguments. According to Flat Earthers, this world was meticulously crafted by the hands of superior beings. The Sun is an artificial celestial body that isn't billions of kilometers away, but is quite near. We've all seen pictures like these. It doesn't look like the rays are radiating billions of kilometers into the distance. They seem to converge at an unusually wide angle, don't they? Supporters of this theory propose that the Sun is powered by an external energy source like our lamps. It gets even more intriguing. According to this theory, the stars, though gigantic, are just a garland powered by the same otherworldly electricity. Just for the sake of beauty, the electromagnetic field of this network can be seen in the polar regions as the northern lights. But there is more. This theory proposes that powerful pumps and filters are hidden underground, responsible for cleaning and filling the oceans with water. Massive ocean whirlpools like Naruto in Japan or Maelstrom in Norway are the drain holes of this flat world's global water system. Indeed, these whirlpools have existed for an unimaginable amount of time. Where does all this water go? And why don't the oceans grow shallow like a bathtub when the plug is pulled? There's still more! If the Earth is spherical, then it should be equally frosty at the North and South Poles in winter. At least they should be roughly the same. That seems logical, and surely that's how it is, right? Well, no. Antarctica is generally colder than the Arctic. 
In fact, it's much colder. On average, a whole 20 degrees colder. To be honest, this is a mind-boggling difference. It's counterintuitive, and it simply shouldn't be this way. But there is more. There are also practical examples that you can check yourself. Imagine a plane on a long-haul flight going from one continent to another. Logically, it should move along a gentle arc, meaning that during the flight it should sometimes adjust its position by lowering its nose to steer and avoid flying off into space. According to flat Earth calculations, a plane should do this every five minutes. Many curious people have wondered about this at least once, and many have personally checked it and thankfully it's an easy thing to do. Experimenters brought a standard construction level on board during an intercontinental journey. This was conducted properly multiple times, taking into account all side effects like turbulence. And no, the plane doesn't make any adjustments. It doesn't lower its nose, it flies as if the Earth is simply flat. And from the window, the horizon not only doesn't show any curvature, but on the contrary, appears deceptively flat. These examples represent just a fraction of the inconsistencies that suggest things aren't quite as straightforward with a spherical Earth. When you put them together, it turns out that our world is just a huge terrarium akin to the ones that many hobbyists enjoy. And it's not inconceivable that its dome is also made of glass. That's what Flat Earthers think. Now let's entertain this idea, if only for a fleeting moment. But what about space? After all, we've all seen the footage from the ISS, where astronauts have fun with the effects of weightlessness. But consider this clip that was even featured on a TV show. These shots literally shocked the public. What do we see on the screen, which clearly wasn't intended to be shown? The same Tim Peak, the same footage, the same bubble, but not quite the same. It's bright green, and behind him we see a lined background. Obviously, it's filming equipment. Could it be chroma key? Are these shots staged and merely the result of video editing? What truly perplexed skeptics is the fact that these shots aren't a joke or a prank. NASA representatives naturally said something like, everything is fine, calm down. But the flat Earth community has significantly increased after that. All right, that's enough. Otherwise, you might just start believing in the flat Earth theory yourself. Let's finally turn to science and move from illusions and interpretations to facts and evidence. At the start of the video, we referred to the flat Earth theory as medieval. However, this term isn't exactly right. Indeed, it's widely thought that during the Middle Ages, people believed that the Earth was supported by three whales, which in turn stood upon a turtle and so on. Actually, this is a double myth, a myth about a myth. The truth is, in the Middle Ages, it was well known that the Earth was spherical. There were flat Earthers then, but astronomy and geography were sufficiently advanced even in ancient Greece. Earth's sphericity was repeatedly and convincingly proven in antiquity, well before our era. So convincingly that the mem phrase, too lazy to explain, is particularly fitting here. We won't provide dozens of arguments, but instead offer a single piece of advice. Anyone can see that the horizon has at least some curvature, which strongly suggests the Earth's spherical shape. You've probably guessed that the next thing we'll mention is objects disappearing over the horizon. Whenever you have the chance to be on the shore of an ocean or even a large lake with active maritime traffic, watch the departing ships. While it may seem like a trivial example if you equip yourself with binoculars, the experience can leave quite an impression. Just so you know, Sometimes there is an interesting effect when, due to the difference in density of the atmosphere, it acts as a lens refracting rays. This can allow you to see objects that have gone over the horizon, sometimes even far beyond it. If you experience this, consider yourself very lucky. Occasionally, these effects generate breathtaking mirages of distant cities, some of which have been even captured on camera, and they look absolutely fantastic. Now, what about the questions? 
Indeed, it's easy to see that Earth is spherical, but how do we address the tricky questions posed by the Flat Earthers? Rest assured, there are simple answers to all these questions. The peculiar converging sun rays coming from clouds are just matter of perspective. It's the same effect we observe when looking at a railway track stretching ahead. An airplane doesn't need to constantly nose down to avoid flying into space because the force of gravity is always directed strictly downwards. This argument is inherently weak because if one could simply fly into space in an airplane, why would we need powerful rockets? Oh right, I almost forgot that there is no space. On a serious note, what about these accidentally captured shots and the chroma key? Nothing, literally nothing at all. No chroma key, no conspiracy theories. This checkered fabric is indeed a technical tool used for filming, but it's not a chroma key. When other astronauts at the station with Tim were asked about this, they didn't understand the question. Sure, they'd seen this rag countless times at the station and used it for filming, so what? As for the temperature differences at the poles, or ocean whirlpools, these are natural phenomena that clearly don't look man-made even to a layperson. In conclusion, we should say thanks to the Flat Earthers. After all, dissecting their arguments really makes you use your brains and pay attention to things that have always been around and didn't raise questions, although they should have. In their unique way, Flat Earthers are quite observant. And although their doubts lead them to misconceptions, doubt itself is a powerful tool. Once upon a time, it was doubt that led Copernicus to consider that the sun does not revolve around the Earth. In challenging something that was obvious, he turned out to be right. So, who knows, perhaps in the future, someone's timid doubt will grow into an amazing discovery that will bring us interstellar flights, limitless energy, or even eternal life. <laughs>